Now, I mentioned uh, the Oscars. Who, who really watched the Oscars? You can watch the Oscars. Okay. This is our first show back since the Oscars happened, and uh, I've been talking to people at random on the street, and uh, a lot of people say that they got together with family and friends to watch the Oscars. That's how most people do it, is they have like a mini party to watch them, see what's going on. Uh, well, I actually had a, an Oscar party myself. <laughs> why, is that, why would you giggle at that? You had a party. Yes, I had a party. And uh, our announcer, Joel Goddard, stopped by. Yeah, he's always a good man, fun at a party. And so did our buddy. He's on the road right now with Bruce, but he had a hole in his schedule, and he came by. Max Weinberg stopped by, too. So the two of them came by to my party, and we took a bunch of pictures while we had this Oscar party. And folks, guess what? I went to the photo hut. Not the photo mat. I go to the photo hut. And they just came in, these photos. And I thought I could just look at these myself and weep, or I could share them with all of you in a little segment we're going to call Oscar Party Photos. Do you want to see these right now? Thank you. This is exciting. These are great photos. Uh, I, uh, I, first of all, I had the Oscar Party at my luxurious Manhattan apartment. Take a look at this thing right here. That is a good... So, that's, that's furniture that's been handed down through the O'Brien generations. <laughs> Unfortunately, Max and Joel showed up over two hours early. There they are coming in. Max is a lumberjack for some reason. And I wasn't quite ready yet. I was very annoyed about it. I called them both inconsiderate bastards. Max said, dude, what's the big deal? I said, you guys didn't even bring anything to this party. Max and Joel just kind of looked at each other for a second. And then Max said, I brought this belt. Joel Goddard then said, actually, that belt is from both of us. I was too filled with hate to respond. That's now my favorite picture of me. To change the subject, Max said, the Oscar pre-show's on, where's your TV? I told him we'd actually be listening to the Oscars on my old-fashioned radio. Max said, how am I supposed to see Nicole Kidman's butt on a radio? Joel went back to his car and brought up a portable TV. I kidded Joel, saying, why do you have a portable TV? Do you live in your car? Joel said, of course I don't live in my car. Then he started crying. Max yelled, this screen is so small, I still can't see Nicole Kidman's butt. So I handed him a magnifying glass, and that seemed to help. Uh, he had just had some soup, I guess. Either that or someone in paint box went too far. Then I suggested we all dress up like our favorite Oscar nominees. I dressed up as Daniel Day-Lewis in Gangs of New York. That was a lot of fun. Slash Willy Wonka, I think. It's more Willy Wonka than Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah. Oh, well, you get the idea. Max dressed as Catherine Zeta-Jones in Chicago. <clears throat> and Joel dressed as Jean-Claude Van Damme. I told Joel that Van Damme has never been up for an Oscar. And Joel said, well, how many Oscar nominees can do this? Unfortunately, Joel couldn't maintain that position. When the, uh, when the actual Oscar ceremony started, we all gathered around the television. I said, look at those phony movie stars. Joel said, yeah, they're not really happy. I said, I bet they wish they had a TV talk show at 12.30 at night. <laughs> then we got really depressed. <laughs> but we cheered up when Steve Martin did his hilarious monologue. Max asked me, hey, how come you can't do funny monologues like that? <laughs> so I punched him in the throat.
While Max was gasping for breath, I said to Joel, doesn't Renee Zellweger look pretty? Joel said, not as pretty as her Chicago co-star, Richard Gere. I delicately asked Joel if he was gay. Joel said, define gay. I said, you know what gay means, Joel. Joel said he didn't and looked up gay in the dictionary and said, I am gay. Max finally got his breath back. I asked Max why his wife hadn't come to the party. Max looked a little uncomfortable. I asked him, is everything okay at home, Max? Max said, sure, in fact, I'm getting a call from my wife right now. Joel said, that's not a phone, Max, it's your wallet. So Max sprayed Joel with mace. <laughs> Just then there was a knock at the door. It was my neighbor who was snubbed by the Oscars, this year, Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> that's right, folks, we got him to play along with us. I jokingly said, hey, Leo, I guess you're a loser just like us tonight, huh? And he jammed my eyes back into my brain. <laughs> without looking at me. <laughs> and turning his body 95 degrees. But you get the idea. Then Leo thought Max really was Catherine Zeta-Jones and started hitting on him. Max daintily removed Leo's hand like a southern lady. Leo put his hand on Max's leg again, so Max punched Leo's head off. I screamed at Max, you just murdered the biggest star in the world. Max said, it's your apartment, chump. You're the one going down. So I knocked Max's head off. Joel begged me not to knock his head off, too. <laughs> I said, I said, I won't if you help me put their heads back on. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, since Joel and I both had irreparable eye damage, we put the heads on the wrong bodies. <laughs> but it was still the best Oscar party ever. with some good times. All right, everybody. We'll take a little break. When we come back, Ringo Starr is here. It's a good show. Of course, as I've said before, my first guest really needs no introduction. Please welcome Ringo Starr.